know, we have um, plenty of um, offices throughout the country, throughout the Northeast. Uh, and the program that we're going to be talking about today is called CarFit. And CarFit is a program, and some people are like, oh, is it for my car? Is that for your car? This is for you. It's a program that can help you fit better with your car so that we can see better out of the car, so that we can be more comfortable in the car, all the while, you know, making it safer for us to drive and hopefully making it safer for us uh, to drive longer. Uh, the program is, well, actually, let me go to this video that keeps wanting to play. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. What happened to my screen? Hang on a second, let's reload this for one second. All right, let's try this again. Screen share. All right, here we go. Somehow it, all right. All right. Oh, it worked two seconds ago. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, let's try one more time. All right. Oh, here we go, slideshow from the beginning. <laughs> All right, so why is this not? All right, let's try one more time. I'm so sorry, this, this is uh, not ever happened to me before. I'm just going to go with this. Yeah. This, all right, let's go from here, from the current slide. There we go. All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. So I am going to show a video. This is a, a sh very short video that's produced by AAA National, and it talks a little bit about the history of it, but it's been for a while. Hi, I'm Rhonda Shaw with AAA, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about CarFit. So what exactly is CarFit? CarFit was developed by the American Society on Aging in collaboration with AAA, AARP, and the American Occupational Therapy Association. It's a community-based program that provides a quick yet comprehensive check of how well you and your vehicle work together. Much like a tailor alters your clothes for a better fit, CarFit recommends minor alterations to your car that can give you a better and safer fit with your vehicle. It's simple and begins with a trained professional asking basic questions that are part of the 12-point CarFit checklist. The process takes about 20 minutes and you'll leave with recommended car adjustments and adaptations, a list of local resources in your area that can assist you further, and a greater peace of mind. So now you may be thinking, well, why is CarFit right for me? Research suggests that older drivers are among the safest drivers. They are more likely to wear their seatbelt and less likely to speed or drink and drive. However, as people age, they're more likely to suffer serious injuries or risk death in a crash because of greater fragility and aging bodies. With age comes physical changes, such as arthritis and decreased vision. These changes can make safe driving especially challenging for seniors. That's why at AAA, we're committed to educating seniors on how they can adjust and interact with their vehicles in ways that optimize comfort and safety. Since the program's inception in 2005, AAA clubs across the nation have conducted the CarFit program in local communities to help keep senior drivers safe. One way to ensure the safety of older drivers is to ensure they are positioned properly inside their cars. And today, we'll take a look at each of the 12 points on the CarFit checklist to accomplish this goal. Are you ready to come take a look? Come join me. All right, so you can see it is a program that is uh, designed for seniors. However, it's really for all drivers. It helps position you better in your car so that it's, again, for safety and comfort. Now, because of the um, COVID situation, we don't have any actual events taking place. We had several set up for, um, for the spring and we needed to cancel all those events. 
we don't have any more coming up because we're waiting for this uh, crisis to be over. So what we're going to do today is tell you what you can do on your own without help from a, from a technician. Um, so we're going to start with the seatbelt. Now, if you look at the photo right here, and I'm going to tell you that there are some people who don't wear their seatbelts. I'm hoping nobody that's listening here, I'm hoping that nobody doesn't wear their seatbelt. We know it's the law, but some people don't wear their seatbelt because it doesn't fit right. It's up on their neck and it's bothering them. What we is even more important is that the, the seatbelt that fits low down on your lap. The photo that I have here, this young lady is wearing her seatbelt the correct way. The strap is on her shoulder and whoops, here we go. should sit flat on your shoulder. The lower lap belt should fit on your lap across your hips. Sometimes people, it, it's up high on their belly and that's just as dangerous. So we want to make sure that we don't, um, you know, tuck it behind your back or under your arm. That can cause serious incident in a crash uh, more so. So what we're going to need to do is if the seatbelt is up on your neck or it's on your face, you need to lower the seatbelt down. If you turn over your shoulder, over your left shoulder, many vehicles, most vehicles, all newer vehicles definitely have it, a mechanism right on the side post that allows you to slide that seatbelt down so it's on your shoulder. Now, I know you can't tell from looking at the picture. I'm, I'm pretty short. I'm five foot two, five foot one, about five foot one. My husband is six foot two. When we get in the car, we have to make a lot of adju different adjustments. And that's the first one. We want to make sure that the seatbelt is fitting you correctly. Uh, right. Next, we're going to look at your seat. And, and there's a lot of things within your seat. The first is we want to be between eight to 10 inches away from the steering wheel. And for short people like me, you might say, well, what if I can't reach the pedals? Well, no matter what, you have to be able to reach the pedals. But eight to 10 inches is definitely the recommended. So you should be able to fit maybe a piece of paper between your chest and the steering wheel. And so a good way to find that out is your wrists, as you stretch them out, let me just go back. This is not supposed to be on automatic. Back. Your wrists, as you stretch them out, should just sit over the edge of the wheel. If the steering wheel is up by your forearm or on your elbow, you're too close. You need to move back just a little bit. And I want you to sit up straight. I always tell people like your car seat, is not a lazy boy. I see people come in sometimes to carpet events and they're laying back. And uh, I can you see over the steering wheel, you just can't. So we want to make sure that you get as much distance away from the wheel as you can. Because the airbags, if you are if you're too close to the airbag when it deploys, and we hope that it never deploys, uh, because that means we hope you've never been in a crash. But if you're too close to the airbag, the airbag can definitely do some serious damage to your face, to your chest. So we want you to be a little further back. All right. In addition, if you, if you look at this one, we also want to be a minimum of three inches. You have a minimum of three inches clearance over the steering wheel. And what that means is that somewhere between your lower lip and your chin should be level with the top of the steering wheel. All right. And now if you look at the, the two photos, the photo on the top, there's a, a man who's driving. Let me just hit the pause button before it goes on. The man who's driving, you can see his chin is level with the top of the steering wheel. And if you look at his steering wheel, it's aimed more at his chest as opposed to having that steering wheel tilted up where it could hit him in the chin and push his head back in a crash. If you look at the photo of the woman on the bottom, She's got all sorts of wrong things going on here, all right? She looks very serious, which is good. She looks focused. But if you look at her chin, her chin is right down here, right in the middle of the steering wheel. And she definitely, if you look at where her eyes are, she doesn't have enough clearance over the steering wheel. And if you look at her arms, whoo, they are super bent. She's crunched right in there. She's probably petite like me but she probably can move the seat back a little bit further. We see a lot of people come into carpet events and they're all crunched up and they're like, move back, raise this up. So here are some fixes that we can make. Oh, I did this again. All right. Uh, hang on one second, let's go back. I just have to go back one second and just redo that, reboot it. Okay.
get back to that. Sometimes I, I accidentally hit the thing that makes it, uh, <laughs> there we go. All right, well, let me go to the next, get to the next slide, here we go. All right, two fix, two fixes. I apologize, I have never <laughs> made so many mistakes. Here we go, two fixes. One, we can tilt the steering wheel down. You locate the mechanism to adjust the tilt wheel. Most cars have it, all new cars do. Most of them, it's down underneath the steering wheel. It's got a little lever that you have to pull out, tilt the wheel down, and then lock it back in. Some vehicles have it on the stem. There's a stem right on the, um, on the side of the wheel. But we're gonna lower it down. We still wanna be able to see the controls and you still need to have at least two or three fingers width. All right, this is driving me crazy here. You still need to have at least two or three fingers width underneath the, the wheel. If you look at this person's hand, they, can, they have some clearance. You still have to be able to turn the steering wheel without your legs getting in the way. And again, the lower tilt, and this is a perfect example. The, the driver looks like they can see all the controls, but this tilted steering wheel is aimed more at their chest and less at their face, all right? So this is one way, again, that we can increase our visual clearance over the steering wheel. And then the second method is to uh, apply, uh, obviously, besides tilting the steering wheel down, you can adjust your seat. Many, most vehicles have a mechanism that you can raise the seat up. And we definitely wanna do that. But if after you've raised the seat up and tilted the steering wheel down, you can try a seat wedge. And the seat wedge, it's wedged in the back, it's tapered at the knee, and it can give you like an extra two inches of clearance or so. It's got this little cutout in the back so that if you have issues with your spine or sitting up straight, it's very, very comfortable, uh, but it definitely, it's made of a, a nice sturdy foam. They sell them on Amazon, they sell them at Home Depot. What I would caution, if you are, they used to sell it at Bed Bath & Beyond for 20 bucks, it was great, and Bed Bath & Beyond stopped selling them. And now they only sell a, um, a flat seat. And the flat is not going to raise you up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make your knees hit your steering wheel, especially if you tilted it down. So we're going to raise the seat up so we have inches of clearance. If you need one of these, again, they sell them on Amazon. They sell them at homedepot.com. There's quite a few places that sell them online. All right, the next thing that we wanna take a look at is our head restraint. Now, you notice I wrote on here, it's not a headrest. <laughs> a lot of people think, oh, I don't like that, it hits my head. It's supposed to hit your head. It's supposed to be touching your head so that in the event of a crash, if the airbag deploys and hits you right in the chest as it should, that your head is not gonna tip back, but your head is gonna be stopped by the head restraint but you do have to adjust it. If you look at the top picture, it's too low. The woman's top of her head, she's got, she, her head's just gonna get whipped right back. In the center, if you notice what, what's wrong is there's distance between that head restraint and her head. She's got it in a good height, but she, her head is not resting against it. In the third picture, that's what we're looking at. There is a little button right down at the bottom. You should be able to tip your hands right behind you and raise it up. And if you can't do it yourself, have somebody help you or get behind the seat before you start driving and raise it to where you want. The center of the back of your head should be right in the center of the seat. All right, let's go to the next slide. So we have did the tilt wheel, we raised the seat up, we did our head restraint. And here's our review on that. We want to be eight to 10 inches away from the steering wheel. We want to be seated high enough to have three inches of visual clearance over the steering wheel. We might need to tilt the steering wheel down. We want to be seated upright and not reclining. And we want to make sure we adjust the head restraint. Right, so that's just the start of it. Now remember, you might not be the only person driving your car. In my car, like I said, my husband drives it, my daughter drives it, uh, we have several people driving it, and even if you think you're the only vehicle driver for that particular car, when you take it to the garage to get it fixed, when you take it to a restaurant, hopefully we'll get to a restaurant sooner or later, um, and um, a, 
the guy takes it, you know, to park it. Uh, I'm close for words. Somebody else might drive your car. So you have to know how to make those adjustments. Now, we also talked about your leg distance. So if you look right over here at our picture, this person's legs are nice and outstretched. They're not cramped up. If you remember back a few slides ago, we saw the woman who had her legs all crunched up. Well, that's not good for her legs and it's not good for driving. She's got no way to maneuver her legs to go back and forth. So we wanna make sure that we are, we are stretched out. Oops. And that our heel should rest on the floor. Not up in the air. If your foot is resting in the air, <laughs> you're going to be stomping on the pedals, and that's not good for driving either. So it should be easy to move from one pedal to the other. And again, you might need to readjust everything all over again. Everything has to work together. The seat height, the visual clearance, how far away from the pedals that you might be. Everything works together. Now, here comes the fun part. This is the mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the mirror, most people adjust their rear view mirror. Okay. That's the easiest one to adjust. You have to be able to see out of the entire back window from your rear mirror. And, you know, you might need to maybe move some of the clutter off the back. In this photo, you know, what I was looking for one that showed just a photo of, of people having stuff on the, on the back of the dash. This person has all this kind of clutter in their car and we, Sometimes see people come in this way also. Your car is not a storage unit. Your car should have what you need in it to go from one place to the next. And we want that back window free and clear so that when you do adjust that mirror, you can see all the way out. So I'm gonna guess that most people here have adjusted their rear view mirror and most people have adjusted their seat forward and back. But now we're gonna to get to the fun part and this is on your side mirrors because most of us have our side mirrors incorrectly adjusted. I don't know about you, but when I was in high school learning how to drive, they told us, hey, you should be able to see the back end of your car in your side mirror. And I'm going to tell you that is not the case. All right. Oops. You should not be able to see your car from your normal driving position in your side mirrors. If you can see a car from there, that car is already in your lane. All right, that is definitely what I said. We're going to need to adjust those mirrors so that you can see the lane next to you. That's where the next car is coming. That's where the car is gonna hit you. The other car is gonna hit you. If you have your mirrors adjusted so you can see your car, well then your rear view mirror and your side mirrors are doing double duty. They're both covering the same area. We're gonna wanna push those mirrors out so that you can see, whoops, there we go, so that, <laughs> sorry, we're gonna to wanna to push them out so that you can see what's coming in the next mirror. So you're going to lean your head, if you look at this top picture right here, you're gonna lean your head all the way over and put your head, your uh, cheek right on the window, then push your mirror out, and chances are it's gonna go as far as it's gonna go. And then when you sit back in your normal position, you're not gonna be able to see your car, but you will definitely be able to see the car in, the, in, that, um, in your, your lane much, much sooner. And you need to do the same thing for the other side. Lean all the way over the center console, put your face right against the window, and then push that mirror out. If you look at the bottom slide, you can see that the red car is the driver. If you look at these two lines that are pointing directly to the blue car, that's where you could see them before. When you push the mirrors out, you'll be able to see the yellow car. You'll be able to see the, the blue car that's directly to your side. You'll also be able to see the truck, the yellow truck uh, from much further away. Everything you can, you're gonna be able to see so much further by pushing those mirrors out, all right? When you're doing it at a car fit event, we'll help you do it, all right? We'll help you see just how much, but we can usually reduce almost six feet of blind space. And that's important. And that is something that you can do today. Now, if you find that you just can't figure out, well, how do I do this when I'm moving my head over here, moving my head over here, get a friend, get a family member, get somebody to help you. You sit in the driver's seat and without moving your head from side to side, have that other person 
be the vehicle in the next lane. Have them stand from at the back end of your car to have them take 10 to 20 steps back. 10 to 20 steps back, you should be able to see them in the rear view mirror. And as they start to walk forward, when you lose them in the rear view mirror, you're going to pick them up in your side mirror. And that makes for almost seamless visibility. You're going to be able to see much, much better. Again, at an event, we'll be able to do that and you'll see the difference. I want you to see it <laughs> for yourself. I want you to try it. Now, again, if you are inclined and you've had your mirrors pointed in, towards your own car for a long time, well then push them out a little bit because it's gonna seem a little weird. When you learn to drive, we learned to drive in the parking lot. We didn't go right for the highway. We didn't go right for the busy road. You can do the same thing with your mirrors. Do it little by little. But if you push them out almost as far as they go, that's why they go out that far. It's going to help you, okay? Again, that's what we wanna be able to do is have more clearance. Now, at an event, we are also gonna have trained technicians there that can help you make those um, adjustments. Some vehicles don't do all those things. Some vehicle, we, my family, we have one vehicle that's a 2003 Dodge Durango and you can't adjust the head restraint. It's molded into the seat. Some cars don't have the adjuster on the side that helps you adjust the seat belt. So if it, you can't adjust it, you can't adjust it. Some things you might be able to change, and especially cars today have so many wonderful technologies in them, but we also don't want those technologies to replace your ability. I have a lot of people that tell me when we do the mirrors, oh, I just wait to see it in the, in the side mirror when it lights up. I don't want you to just refer to those things. I want you to make sure that you're going to use your own senses and that you're using the, the vehicle's technologies as a secondary. All right. Uh, but maybe, maybe you are having some mobility issues. And that's why, again, a car fit event is geared mostly for senior drivers because, again, sometimes as we mature or get a little older, our vision may decrease. Our field of vision may decrease. Maybe we have arthritic conditions that make it hard to move. So we have trained occupational therapists at the event that can show you some of the tools that might be able to help you. So I am going to show you some of those tools. And let me just get out of our, out of this for a second. All right, let's go to this view. All right, so some of the tools that we have. Uh, seat belt, I mentioned that maybe you don't wear the seat belt, maybe because it's, even if you've moved it down, maybe it's rubbing on your body. This is a pretty easy thing. It is a foam cushion that fits right around your seat belt. And it's that memory foam, so it feels really good. And that can sit right on your shoulder, it can sit right across your chest and make it a little more, bit more comfortable. Or maybe you have an implanted device. Maybe you have a pacemaker, maybe you have, or you're sitting in the passenger side, maybe it's on this side. This is a device and it is called a um, soft touch. It's got a cutout in here. This is also memory foam and it attaches right to your seatbelt so that you can put this right over where the implant is and the seatbelt is not going to irritate or chafe in that area. Maybe you don't use the seatbelt because you can't reach it because, oh, my shoulder hurts, I've got arthritis. This is actually a seatbelt extender. So this clips right onto your seatbelt and it stays there. And then when you're reaching over, you only have to reach here instead of reaching all the way over here. You can reach and you can pull it across. And at a car fit event, again, we um, would have these items here not to sell because car fit events are always free but we can show you how to use them. And if you like it, we'll give you a resource where you can buy it. Now, let's talk about getting in and out of the car. Maybe you have difficulty getting it in because your legs are just so heavy that you can't get them up. This is a leg lifter and it's got a handle over here and it's got a very stiff feature right here. You put your foot right in it and you can use your other hand to help lift that leg into the seat. We can also look at a swivel seat. This is like a seat on a lazy Susan. All right, this part sits on the seat. You can sit on it and help you can, it can help you slide and pivot to get into the seat a little bit easier. Or you can use a simple plastic bag. Sit on the bag, swivel in, and then take the bag out so you're not sitting on a plastic bag for the rest of your ride. And I already mentioned, I showed you in the demonstration about our wedged seat. Again, it's nice and comfortable. 
You see where I'm sitting right now? If I sit on this wedge, look how much higher I got. I got much, much higher, all right? And that is definitely gonna give me better clearance over the steering wheel. Let's suppose you have limited neck mobility and turning to look out your window is difficult. So maybe, and I apologize, this is cracked when I brought it home from AAA. This is, ooh, you can see my messy room. <laughs> this is an, a, a mirror that gives an extended view. It's convex, it's a convex mirror. So when you clip this onto your existing rear view mirror, and I caution, I wouldn't get one of these unless you absolutely need it because it does take up, look how much space it takes up right across here. It takes up that much space in, in your front windshield as well. So you might wanna, you know, and again, if it becomes dislodged, it can become a, um, a something that could, could hurt you in a crash. So you wanna make sure if you put it in, that you put it in according to the package directions and it's nice and firm. Sometimes people will ask us, well, what about on the side mirrors? Can I get one of these kind of mirrors? And the answer is yes. But again, I caution you to make sure that you're going to use it in an appropriate way. This is also a convex mirror. And this one sits on top of your existing mirror. Some people have the little tiny button ones. And here's where the problem is, is that it's very hard, especially as we get older, for our eyes to adjust from a very, very tiny circle to the next mirror to the next mirror. So if you practice using it, yes, it can give you a bigger picture off to your side which is wonderful, but if you're looking so hard at that little tiny mirror, you're gonna miss things in front of you, you're gonna miss things on the side, so use them with caution. My AAA van that I drive uh, you know, back and forth to, to presentations has one of those mirrors right in the side, and when I first got the car, I didn't really use it that much. Once I learned how to move my eyes swiftly from the little mirror to the bigger mirror, looking over my shoulder, it became much easier. Finally, the last device that I'm gonna show you is this, this is a great item. This is called a handy bar. This is getting in the vehicle, getting out of the vehicle, all right? This, as you open up your car door, there's a little tiny U-shaped bracket. Every car has them, it's what locks your door, what closes your door and locks it shut. Sometimes we see people go, coming in and out of carpet events and they're climbing out of their car, or they're struggling to just physically get up. What this handy bar does, it goes right into the bracket and now it's facing out. This makes a very steady and it locks right in there. And now you can put your hand on the dashboard. You can put your hand here and it gives you a steady, firm, something to grip and to push yourself out. Pushing is an easier action than trying to pull yourself out of the door. It also serves as a seatbelt cutter and it also serves as a window punch in the event of an emergency. They're kind of heavy though, so when you're driving, we wanna make sure it's out of the way, that you either have it locked in your, in your um, glove box or that it's under your seat in a place that it's not going to move, some place that you can reach it so when you're getting back in the car again that you can just plop it right into place. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do I get one of those items? I'm gonna go back to my screen for a second and let's go back to where we were. And, whoops, I do have a handout. When we go to our events, we actually have a handout that we give out. And it tells you where are the different places that you can get them. My first, <laughs> my first place to go to would be Amazon. Sometimes some of the places that we, we look at, sometimes they stop selling an item, but you can see we have the handy bar, we have the leg lifter, the seat wedge, the seat belt extender. This is a handout that we would give you. Again, I can send this to um, uh, Stephen at the library so that if you want it or you can email me, you know, I can email that to you as well. All right, let's go to the next. All right, at an event, again, trying out all of those things. We, it makes it easier if you have somebody to tell you how to do those things. But you can definitely make these, uh, a lot of these changes in your car yourself. Look at the buttons. Look at your owner's manual. Uh, when I purchased my most recent car, and, and I know what things to look for, I will tell you that an IT guy came to my car, and he was a young guy, and he talked really fast, and I knew what to look for from being a car fit technician, and I'm an instructor, so I teach other people how to do it. <laughs> he talked really fast, 
And I had to ask him, could you please repeat that on how to work some of the features in the car? Go to the dealer if you have a new car. Let the dealer help you, um, you know, may ask them to take the time to do that. But if you're not sure, or if you're looking at the rear view mirror, a lot of the cars now, they all have to have a backup camera. Sometimes at a car fit event, sometimes people will say, well, I know that I have this camera, but I'm not sure what all the lines mean. So we can show you, here's, here's what this means in your car. Do we know what's in every single car that comes to an event? No. And every time I think I've seen everything, we've seen people coming in with all kinds of either contraptions in their car or they just didn't realize, oh, I didn't realize that my seat went up that high. I didn't realize I needed to be that high up or that I shouldn't be so crunched in to my steering wheel. We also ask our participants to get out of the car. When you come to a car fit event, we also um, show you how to check the tire pressure. We give you a, a tire pressure gauge and we encourage you to do it and not wait for the light to go off in your car that says, oh, it's time to get some pressure, you know, time to get a little air in your tires. If you wait for the light to go off, your tire's already 25% too low. If you are one of those people that waits to do it, you know, get it taken care of right away. Your tire pressure and the treads in your, in your tire are such an integral part of driving safely. That's what comes in contact with the road. We'll show you how to do that. Now, because we don't have any events in, your, in any area right now, I will tell you that hopefully in the spring, Every year I do a training at the Stony Brook University at the Southampton campus. They have a huge parking lot that they make available to us. We take appointments, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes per car. And we wanna make sure that you get that, um, you know, ideal attention, that one-on-one -on -one attention. You'll have two technicians and an occupational therapist working with you. If nothing is needed to be changed in your car, then you're in and out very quickly. But almost everybody who comes to a car fit event find out something either about their car or um, you know something that they want to share with someone else. In addition, I will tell you that if you had further questions about what we do with CarFit, the CarFit website is right up here on the screen. My email address is right here. And there also AAA has a wonderful website called seniordriving.aaa.com. That's a nationally produced website. Um, sometimes it, it, we have um, people who call our office who ask, you know, can we do a one on one driving test? You know, uh, my mom needs help, my dad needs help, I need help. AAA doesn't do, we don't do that in this area, but we can refer you to places in the area that, that can um, do that for you. It's a little more complicated and just say, hey, let's get in the car and drive, uh, which I'm not going to get into, you know, today, but if you had a further question about that, I can, I can answer in a phone call or, or in an email uh, why that's a little bit more complicated, but I, we also have some resources available and there are some out, out on the East End, not as far out as East Hampton, but um, there, there are some places that are there. <sighs> Woo. Uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Stephen, I'm not sure if we can see if there are any questions that we have. Um, and I suspect that, you know, maybe we do. Sometimes we, we get questions about the, you know, specifics does anyone have any questions um, if they have any questions you can use the raise hand option or if you'd like to just um, type your question into the chat and I'll gladly read it um, or if you'd like to just unmute your microphone and yes. ask your question by all means please do Right. Sometimes people ask, hey, should I use a particular device? Um, Let's see. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Any uh, questions? Oh, I see two in the chat. Anything in the chat? Oh, how much space should be between the shoulder harness and your body, and how do you tighten the harness? All right. That is from Joyce. Um, so the shoulder harness, the, your seat belt, should be pretty snug. Now, in most cars, the, it has a mechanism, right, in the, in, the, um, in the retractor that it allows it to be slack, okay? It's going to be slack, but it has a, a locking mechanism that if you were in a crash, it automatically locks and pulls back. 
you could test it out actually in your own car that if you when you're buckling it and you start to pull it out if you stop and you try to pull it a little further because you realize oh i didn't get it far enough to actually buckle it that's the locking mechanism working all right or if you jerk it very suddenly it's it's definitely going to lock so it just needs to be so that the shoulder harness is sitting flat on your shoulder that we have it buckled in and that we want to try to get that lap belt so it's low on your lap across your hips if you have a big belly uh and and again some people or if you're expecting we want that lap belt to be under your belly and not across your your midsection because again there's there's no bones protecting that your hips will actually absorb the force of the crash and your hips are very strong or much stronger than any of the midsection your abdominal area that has no protection and again that can cause a lot of internal damage so we do want to make sure that you have it buckled that it sits flat on your shoulder whether you need to raise or lower that on the on the on the uh, door post uh, but across your lap nice and snug uh, snug so it's comfortable the mechanism will help uh, lock it up did that answer your question all right are there, are there any other questions or comments or all right i will say this um to, to finish it up like i said i'm hoping that in the spring that we will be able to have another event at that uh, southampton campus it's pretty easy to get to it's not east hampton but it is as far out as we go on the island um, we actually train their occupational therapy students there as technicians so it's part of their curriculum uh, when we have that, I will let Stephen know, and he can publicize that through your library. Sure. Uh, so that, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to have those events back in this. I usually hold at least five across Long Island, Nassau, Suffolk, and, um, well, mostly Nassau and Suffolk. I don't usually go into Queens, but we go pretty close to the Queens border. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much for an informative uh, presentation. We appreciate your time and we look forward to having more events with uh, AAA. Terrific. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.